Hi, Trenton. Hi, Connor. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Well, welcome to Switching Reels. Ooh, welcome to Real Switching Now. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, today, we watched a really cool religious movie today. It was not a relig- religious movie. <laughs> but it was the City of God. It, yes, it was the City of God. We watched the City of God today. Good old Jerusalem. It's not Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> the Jews showed up. Israel showed up. <laughs> It was mentioned <laughs> when they were talking about Israeli firearms. Spoilers. Yes, no, that's firearms. not behind the spoiler wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First oh. off, this is a crime movie. Is it a crime movie? Yes, very much so. Interesting. <laughs> it's a crime movie. <laughs> 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 Fantastic! Who are recommending um, this crime movie? If, if that's what it is, I would I would say if you enjoy crime movies and if you're not off put by subtitles. Yeah, this is very. It's another subbed movie. Yeah, not Japanese this time. No. So, um, this is also one of my favorite crime movies of all time. Like this one falls very close to like The Departed for me and which we will watch later but nice. like those are those two kind of vie for my favorite crime movie position nice I know I've said The Godfather as well but you know that's it is number two so <laughs> like, you can't just keep going around saying oh The Godfather is my favorite because you sound like a scrub yeah that's true so yeah it's uh, like this is reasonable <laughs> this is more, it's, it's farther down the list you're like oh okay I hadn't seen or even heard of uh, City of God. Yeah, this, this point. one's weird because, like, a lot of people have seen it, but a lot of people don't even know it exists. Nope. And I had no idea. I think that's a travesty. Yeah. Personally, which brings us to our next point. Does it deserve its place? I'd say absolutely. This is twenty five right now. I think something like that. Somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. around there. I would agree. Yeah. Actually, like, and I, I, I probably wouldn't put it much higher, despite my love for the movie. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but no, totally. Like it's, I I think that this is one of the most like harmon harmonically resonant films with where it is. You know, it just fits yeah. where yeah. on this list so far. Yeah, I and I definitely agree. Like it definitely deserves to be on the list. Yeah, there's no absolutely. question. About I would it. agree with that. Like, and it may, probably just because I'm desensitized because we watched so many <laughs> <laughs> very heart wrenching movies. This one is heart wrenching too, but in a different way. Yeah, you know, like. I watched this one. I was like, no, this is refreshing, almost. <laughs> Again, I said that it, about when we watched... I can't remember what we watched. Maybe it was Interstellar. But, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Um, I will say nothing because I don't remember what I was going to say. Good man. Yeah. Appreciate you. All right. So, um, ratings. Um, this one is an enjoyment 10 out, 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah. And... I would say there are some things that feel like they should drop the technical a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's part of what makes the movie great. Exactly. So, like, I'd say this is a light eight to a strong nine, somewhere in there. Flipped it, but yes. Strong eight to a light nine, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I would actually, I think I'd completely agree with you. I'd probably put my enjoyment nine or nine and a half but okay. um technical out degree i think it's a solid nine yeah actually like i i really didn't notice very much about this that it would have changed technically so my biggest issue with the movie i also think is one of the movie's biggest strengths which is here? huh can you talk about it on this side of the yeah wall? i can talk about okay, it on perfect. this side of the wall um it's the entire way that the story is structured yeah i love it's that it's kind of it's kind of like all of these small vignettes that like fit together so well to tell so an overarching well. story. Yeah, like really well. It's I was just really surprised. Yeah. It's, Every time they were like, it's a like, new vignette now. Everything feels super disconnected, but yeah. somehow a part of the whole. Absolutely. Um, and again, I think that's the movie's strength, but I also think that it's a weakness as well because like half the movie you're watching going like, where am I again? Why Why are we Here. learning about this random person exactly. who has, to this point in the story, had no... The movie does a really good job, though, to me at least, of building faith. 
you know? Yeah. It's like, trust me, man. Yeah. You know, like, I, I promise we're going somewhere. I'd say once it moves past the 60s section. Mm-hmm. Um, when we're still in the 60s section, we're little... still trying to figure things out and exactly. all that kind of stuff. Um, but by the time we're into the 70s, it starts to really click. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah um, that. That's great. I think so we're, we're going to have a good conversation here. It was, yeah. It was a good movie. Yeah. Uh, so, like, subscribe. Please. Comment. Uh, Would love to have you guys. Or, or don't. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You can share it to people, too. Yeah. I mean, I'd love it if you share it. <laughs> send, it send it in Messenger, like... Uh, is weird to do for full length videos <laughs> or Discord. Discord is normal, more normal. Just put it on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> That's what we have to do. <laughs> add it. Mm-hmm. Add it to your Instagram story. I don't That's better. know how yeah, Instagram but, works. I so. mean, we <laughs> will we'll be making a post on Instagram, so you can totally incorporate it into. Oh, Instagram okay. Story. Fair. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Please do it. Um, but yeah, this is where we're going to have the spoiler warning. Spoiler wall. Um, coming towards you. So before we get into any of the spoilers, I just want to say, if you haven't watched this movie, yeah, let's go do I it. would recommend it. Yeah, I would um, recommend it too. Understanding that it's a pretty gritty movie. Yeah, it is pretty gritty. Like, if you're already here, this is past recommendations already. Whoops. Yeah. I forgot to give mine, <laughs> I think, actually. I would recommend this to people basically full stop. Like, it is pretty gritty. Yeah. Um, there is profanity, but it's in a different language. They so only have to read <laughs> profanity. Uh, there is plentitude of nudity, um, and lots of drugs. Yeah, that is like the s- hallmark of this movie is <laughs> drugs. I think, as far as drugs in film go, um, I'm pretty desensitized to it at this point. Oh, for sure, absolutely. In case I... you're not, though, in yeah. case you're not, this is swimming with drugs. There's not a scene <laughs> basically where someone does not die or have drugs. Yeah. Um, and there is some, there is some really intense stuff in this yeah, as well. Absolutely, um, no very intense yeah. for sure. Um, and since we're past the spoiler wall, like the scene where they shoot the kids in the foot, yeah, and then have the kid have, shoot the other kid, yeah, and that kid dies later, yeah. Whew. Like it's a, it's an intense movie. It's a very intense movie. Um, yeah. Which brings us to our summary. Do yeah. You wanna, do you want to do this? Yeah. I'll, so I, <laughs> I'll do the. I. This is a heartwarming story of what it's like to grow up in the sixties and seventies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I would say this film largely follows. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Um, this film largely follows. Uh, Rocket, who is a kid that is growing up in the slums um, and wants nothing to do with any of the crime element. He's not blasted off even once. (laughs) (laughs) He wants nothing to do with the crime element um, because he dreams of becoming a photographer. Uh, And that's basically all he wants to do. Uh, But he wants nothing to do with the crime element, despite the fact that it is uh, sort of prevailing over the entire society that's around him um so we watch him as he interacts with the world that is kind of controlled by um a criminal named Lil Zay uh as he sort of rises to power and then gets into uh like a full-on war with a um guy named Knockout Ned uh and it all comes to head in a giant firefight um, that uh, leaves one of them, or I guess one of them dead and the other one seemed to be dead. Yep. So. And all on camera. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. That's probably the closest summary I can give of the movie. Completely. Um, well, that it's was a very accurate sound summary for yeah. you, by the way. But as we've said before, like there's a lot of characters that just kind of <sighs> so like many characters. they start out as being not important to the story at all, and then they, as their sort of thread finishes, you can see why it was important that we get to know these characters. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I I think it's it's masterfully woven um, in a way that makes it very difficult to 
sort of put your finger on um, narratively. Yeah, I completely agree. This is going to be great. So let's go into initial reactions. I really like this movie. Um, yeah. I don't like... There was a lot of death and there was a lot of sadness in it, but it was a really well done movie. Mm-hmm. Like, just genuinely yeah. well done. I would put it above... Um, Silence of the Lambs. I know why it's here mm-hmm. and not above Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Um, mostly because of the probably the target audience, but I put it above it. It's a very yeah. Very I mean, good I prefer movie. this to Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Like but again, this one's this like, one's I top ten for me. This one. Like this was <laughs> actually fairly like it was really good. Yeah. It's competing with uh, Twelve Angry Men. Actually. Oh my like, gosh. It's, <laughs> it's up there. I I'm not sad about this movie. <laughs> yeah. It is intense. Yeah, yeah. it is. Comparing the two is comparing a black and white orange to apples. So, which one's the black and white orange? Oh, I guess it's the Twelve Angry Men. <laughs> yeah, it okay. is. that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's like uh, comparing black and white orange to carrots. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I remember the first time I saw this, I was in high school and I was just absolutely blown away because I didn't, I didn't know you could tell a story like this. No. Like, I've always loved this kind of storytelling too, though. mm -hmm. Like the not first person, but kind of first person things or first person from a different perspective, which is weird. Yeah. First person perspective from like a strange. Kind of like a first person omnipotent yes exactly of, yeah. it is almost first person omnipotent because we always come back to rocket right yeah like it's always someone that rocket is known or mm-hmm. is seen uh, and has interacted with that he is talking but a lot about. of the a lot of the stories are sort of like you get the sense that they're legends oh, inside the, yeah the place so everybody has heard about say the apartment so have you read um uh, brandon sanderson's secret project one yes you have i have yeah, yeah. trust in the emerald sea it feels a little bit like that from the narration perspective. Mm-hmm. Like we have Rocket as a the bit, one yeah. nearly omnipotent narrator because mm-hmm. he's lived and is a reporter. And like, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really, <laughs> really cool perspective to have. Yeah. Uh, also, you mean the Nightmare Painter has the same? Oh, it does. S- sort yeah, of. Yeah. Except. Oh, and also that's separated a little bit. That's a good except point. Except he's actually. a coat rack through the entire he's thing. A coat rack. Uh, spoilers for Secret Project Three. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had to say that. But... I, I didn't realize that this would be a problem. But if we have any crossover audience between <laughs> Brandon Sanderson's work and movies. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Yeah, we're fans. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, no, completely agree. Like, yeah. Because it, it, it was more narration, like, and but yeah. they told the narration perfectly. Yeah, they included their nar- the narrator, and the narrator was reliable. Actually, it was yeah. weird that he was such a reliable narrator. <laughs> <laughs> it was very yeah. cool. Yeah, um, that is actually something that I really love about this film is that like there is sort of this strange balance between Rocket as narrator and as character. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really have more to say about that no, in I, particular. Yeah, I completely um, agree. Um, so in that scene, some performances. There were so many good performances in this movie. Yes. I, I don't I don't think there's a bad one, no, honestly. I really, and that's weird to yeah. say. Like, especially with the amount of child actors they had. <laughs> like, what? Where did they find all of these good children actors? Right? Like, some of them got shot in the foot. Like, yeah, when, when the kid gets shot in the foot, like, it's believable. Yeah, this guy is like, in pain and also feel, scared for his life. Yeah, you feel so bad for this kid. Yes, for all the kids involved in that situation. Right, and in yeah. every situation here. <laughs> but that seems <sighs> so strange because, like, the majority of child actors just haven't found their chops yet. Like, there are a select few, mm-hmm. but, like, even in big-budget American stuff, which is where the money is. Exactly. Like you don't find this kind of. Yeah. And you I don't think find is, this kind of talent that young. No, and I, I do think it's a little bit like how it was shot. Yeah. Like we don't have a lot of a lot of we have some close ups of kids. They're almost yeah. always like in a crowd or in a group of kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that was smart to do because when yeah. you have groups of kids together, that's yeah, you can't go wrong with it. You know? That's fair. Like, yeah. You don't have to choreograph that much because they're doing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's true, um, but I mean, even 
even when they did get yeah, like close steak. ups or exactly yeah, or the medium shots. Yeah, yeah. steak and fries. Steak and fries. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this this is a crazy movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. Oh, so good. Um, yeah. really, really. Good. And yeah, I mean, like, and the, uh, uh, especially the kid that played Lil Zay. As yeah. a kid, yes, like he is bone chilling from the beginning, from the very beginning, which is really, wild. I can see how this entire story plays out. Yeah, <laughs> based on this one child. As yeah. soon as I saw people dead, I was like, "Oh no, he killed him." Yeah, there's, there's no. I didn't realize how overt that was. Yeah, it was really overt. Like they Until weren't doing this anything. Watch. Like yeah. the, the the adults, yeah, weren't doing anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. The only one that could have is little dice at that point. But I remember the first time I watched this, and part of this was probably that I was in high school. High school. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, like, I remember thinking, like, it was a big mystery. Like, how did... How could they have how, died? How did all of the people get shot? Yeah, like, did I the miss police? something? Exactly. Like, yeah. Um, but, like, going back and the fact that, like, they start hearing the gunshots, they go, oh, it's the police shooting. Yes. And then they immediately bring up like Lil Zay's gone. Yeah. Or it goes in the other direction. It's Lil one of the dice. two. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, Lil Dice. Big, something's wrong. He's gone. Yeah. Um But yeah, that like watching it again I went, Oh wait, no, this oh, is super no, clear. They they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you what's going on here. And it actually makes it a little bit more jarring when they go back to show him doing it. Yeah. Like, because you kind of would expect like you find him there and you're like Oh, he's there. And then, like, they go back and show that what night. And that's, yeah. That guy had a problem from a very young if age. You're, if you're past the spoiler wall and you don't know, uh, Little Dice was a kid <laughs> and that was just kind of put people. on lookout duty uh, while they went in and robbed a motel. And then he went in after they had left everybody tied up and shot all of the tied up people and some that weren't tied up yeah just naked yeah <laughs> this is one of the times smiling and laughing the yes, whole time <laughs> the entire time the one thing that got me a little bit was counting shots in this yeah they don't yeah no they don't you, your guns have infinite ammo yeah which is nice very convenient yeah. as a lot of <laughs> But, uh, like, he killed, like, seven or eight people with a six-shot revolver. Yeah. <laughs> and almost everyone in this had either a six-shot revolver or some other sort of non-mag... Like, some of them were magazines, some of them weren't. And the one that's with magazine until... makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, the un... 60s were all revolvers. Yeah. Yeah, once they get into the 70s, that's when... But even Knockout Ned had a propensity for revolvers. Uh, like, that that's first true. one, whenever he actually, like, comes and tries to shoot everyone at first, yeah. was a six-shot, and he shot, like, 12 shots. And I wonder how much of that would be accurate to the time period and the location. Mm -hmm. Like, just because, Absolutely. like, that's what's available. Yeah. And, like, there are guns everywhere, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot of, like, first-hand, like, top-of-the-line guns yeah. until the the gangs start Either bringing in them or uh, stealing them yeah. from gun shops. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I <sighs> so yeah, it makes sense. And the the focus on corruption in this, like you start yeah. at corruption, like there's yeah, like the cops in this are never straight arrows. Nope. Um, there isn't one. And actually, that was something that was interesting on this watch too. Is like there are a total of maybe two or three people in this that ever show a shred of kindness to people without something that's self-serving. George. George? Yeah. I think George was good. George. He was, he, everyone loves George. Oh, that uh, that's not George. That's uh, Benny. Is it Benny? How'd I get George? I don't know. That's, that's what crazy. I was confused about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Benny is the... One that everyone loves. Yeah, the yeah. one that everybody likes. Benny. Um... Obviously, he was, like, self-serving to a fair extent, but, yeah. like... But he also cared about other people. Like, yeah. it was it was me first, but once I'm taken care of, I can take care of everybody else, too. Exactly. Um, but most people, like, Rocket included, mm -hmm. like, just looking out for number one. Yeah. Um, and that was just really interesting to watch this time through, 
of like, wow, there's not a whole lot of people here that like you can really get on board with. Nope. Like, knock out Ned at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, so he's a great guy at first. Yeah. Um, Even kind of like empathize with some of the like 60s of the, the whatever the trio is. Oh, the Tender Trio? Yeah, the Tender Trio. Like, yeah. They're, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It is Robin Hood esque with more emphasis on the fact that they're yeah. getting something from some, this. Of, some of it is like to me, the Tender Trio strikes me very much as like thrill seeker yeah. kind of exactly. criminal behavior. Like yes. it's not We're not like, doing this for the, power. They're not doing it for power or money or anything. They're just doing it because it's a fun thing to do. Exactly. Which is kinda of messed up. But <laughs> <laughs> when in Rome or are you just, in Jerusalem? Are you just gonna start <laughs> saying different cities that have nothing to do with this movie? At least when in Rome's a saying. <laughs> That's true. When in LA. <laughs> Depends on the part of LA and the time of day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so weirdly, standout scenes, there aren't a lot of them to me. Yeah. And I think part of the reason is because this entire movie kind of feels like one sort of chopped up scene for the most part like there are definitely changes that happen throughout it but i feel like as soon as you get from 60s to 70s and the 60s only lasts like 20 minutes yeah 20 something 30. like that yeah um but yeah once you get into the 70s like it feels like one continuous scene all the way through yeah no totally there's i think the um i think benny's scene for like his going away party is pretty standout mm-hmm. and they i think did a really good job of oh yeah like like with the flashing lights and all yeah. that kind of stuff yeah and even just showing like hey is a big enough party that the small disturbances that Lil Z can do yeah except for when shots start getting fired right yeah don't matter <laughs> but yeah. it's fantastic and then um that entire section after he dies also is pretty pretty standout yeah in a heart-wrenching way <laughs> yeah yeah I I I don't know like the so there is also the rape scene mm-hmm. for whatever reason that has stuck with me yeah um a... it like it's a uncomfortable scene mm-hmm. for sure also the shoveling to death in the 60s oh yeah i'm glad we didn't <laughs> see that uh, like they got you the perfect amount of close that, that you're was... like wow i'm co- uncomfortable <laughs> but i can bear with it you know I don't know. So the more films that I've watched, the more I'm like, just show it to me because my imagination is going to make it way worse than you no, ever would on film. I, I was fine <laughs> with it this way, actually. Uh, Shorty <laughs> deserved much worse. Yes. On all counts. Yeah. Um, yeah. <sighs> for like, it's, it's uncomfortable for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I did really appreciate about that is that they focused in on the amulet when he was doing that yeah because call back to to the shaman yeah yeah, who gives him the amulet and says don't have sex with this on you'll die exactly and then he dies later and i feel feel like that was kind of over a year later but it yeah but it's a direct result too yeah no that's a good point so yeah that's a really good point yeah I I appreciated the thematic through line yeah, there. Absolutely. Um, not necessarily what I would like to <laughs> watch. No. Um but and, and then, thankfully again they they keep good distance. Yeah. Like there's there are certain things that they're like, hmm, this might be a little too squeamish for us. Yeah. Um like Schindler's list does not have the same uh, <laughs> No, it does not. It does not have the same uh uh, hesitation like, yeah ex- it's, yeah like, <laughs> there, there's something to it um this one does i will like, say hey, lots of gruesome murder fine i will say schindler's list is probably a little bit more detached than this yeah. is as well absolutely no it absolutely because at some point you can't be attached yeah like with this one they're all they all still kind of like almost have a purpose in doing it mm-hmm. like this is the way of life instead of we're committing an atrocity <laughs> right yeah uh, <laughs> so um yeah yeah the emphasis also on generally like it starts as children 
like the runs start yeah. to show up less like before halfway through. Yeah, and that at that point, like we haven't even really established that the city is the city yet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. I think it's still. Yeah, you're oh right. wait, it's, it's before... right after. It's right after we get into the seventies. So like everything's been built up at this point. But yeah, it's... I can't remember if he had already murdered everyone by that point or not. No, think... he hadn't. Oh, no, he had, because he goes and murders everyone when he gets the first blunt for Angelica, and that one is way before the runs. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's not way before the runs, though, because he's with her basically in the next scene. Yeah, in the next scene, they break up. Like, Angelica is still with... No, no, yeah, they, they break up, but I'm pretty sure the next scene that we see Rocket... Or Angelica is the scene where they're together on the beach. Yeah, that might so. be true. Totally. Yeah, so it's... At least that's the way that I remember it. I don't scene know. Scene-wise, it's very close. Yeah. But yeah, the, the impact they have is weird. Mm-hmm. The runts? Yes. And well, the amount of, like, again, just the cycle perpetuating. Yeah. There's nothing to stop it. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that's that's a really strong theme through the whole movie. You know, you see all of these people that are being killed and then their loved ones come back for yeah. somebody like the guy that kills knockout ned he was the kid of the security guard Dude, after knockout ned, knockout ned went yeah which he was at that point killing aimlessly yeah um just because he got in the way he got in the way um but like he was only there because of his girlfriend being raped and then his family getting murdered by right him. and the reason that Lil Zay was where he was in all of that was because number one he was going to kill Carrot and number two um, he was still fucked up over what happened to Benny yeah and the only reason Benny died <laughs> right so it's all this oh it's because was because of Lil Z had threatened to kill him. No, it was because um, he had taken over Blackie's. Uh, oh yeah, business. That's true. Yeah. Well, and then not because of that. It was because he he kicked him out. Yeah. But like again, all of this, like all of the violence goes. In so many circles. Yeah. It, it does feel a little bit like um, Lil Dice was a start, you know? Like, he didn't really have a, much of an origin story. That's <laughs> as true. As it comes to everyone else That's in this true. story. But that yeah, was, but he, he was the brothers. natural, yeah. He It was the natural progression. Uh, progression from what the Tender Trio was doing. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. And Nintendo treated it because of the government. Well, (laughs) I think that they did it because they were poor and... Because of the government. Sure. It wasn't because of the government. But, yes, it was. Yeah. Destroy the government. It would have been better. (laughs) I don't know if that's the case. Moral of the story. (laughs) Government doesn't do anything good here. All the police are corrupt, so... I will say... Uh, this movie sprinkles in humor in some really weird places, really and I kind of love it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to. They did such a good job with like, it. One like... of my favorite parts is when Knockout Ned's sitting at the table, and he goes, I don't know why that fucker didn't just kill me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, then he hands over to Z. Why didn't I just kill that guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So good. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just these <sighs> random scenes that you're just like like it's the, it's not there enough for you to expect it, no. but when it it's there frequently enough that when it does hit, you don't like, feel bad. Exactly. It doesn't feel out of place. Like right, everything yeah. in this like even though it's a cacophony of strangeness, yeah. doesn't feel out of place. Yeah, like, it's very they yeah. told the story perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's very so cool how it all good. sort of fits together. Yeah, I, can I mean, agree. and there are there are lots of I guess these are kind of the standout scenes, right? That we yeah. can go through, but like, through here. um, 
the chapter flirting with crime, right? Yeah. Where uh, Rocket <laughs> is trying to become a criminal, but he Everyone's can't. Just Everybody's too nice. just too cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, couldn't hold up knockout Ned. He was too cool, and he yeah. let one of them through the exactly through the turnstile for free. Couldn't uh, <laughs> couldn't hold up the bakery because the <laughs> lady girl was, was nice and flirting with him. <laughs> couldn't hold up the guy from New uh, Jersey, essentially. It sounds like <laughs> because even he was nice, <laughs> and nobody from New Jersey is cool. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, I'm not. <laughs> You know what you did. Yeah. You lived in New York long enough that I don't think anybody no. can. <laughs> They're wonderful people. <laughs> if they stay in their state. There was a twitch. <laughs> <laughs> For those that can't see the video. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, this is this really is sort of a a grab bag of yeah. a movie, but it all fits together. Like it does. It's, I really don't know how to explain it other no. than it's like curry almost. Where it it's is just kind like, of like curry. <laughs> but there's there's even other things that are e- it's even more like, you know? Like ramen. You know those really weird ramens that you can get that have a lot of strange things in them? I guess maybe it's just me. Like, I'm not used to ramen, you know? That has <laughs> eggs, random hard-boiled eggs in it. It has weird spices. It has noodles. <laughs> it has chicken. Sometimes it has weird meats in it. And every time you're like, what am I going to get? We got to go for ramen at some point. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I love ramen. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just it's so good. It was a really good movie. I'm yeah. really surprised. Like, if, if you're interested in a good time uh, <laughs> as a movie, uh, then you're in for one. <laughs> yes, there were like six asterisks there. <laughs> If you don't know what they are, please go and watch the rest of this video again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say that this is sort of... This is not the quintessential crime film, but it is a quintessential crime film. Absolutely. Um, you know, I would I would say if you're looking for the quintessential crime film, I'd still probably point you to, like, Goodfellas. No, oh, Goodfellas is... Okay. But... Oh, that's true. It was pretty good. I liked this one. Yeah. That is quintessential, though. You're completely yeah. correct. I think Godfather 1, though, is still more quintessential okay. for crime. That, that's fair. And, and if you don't want quintessential, you can go watch 7. That's, yeah, if you're still looking for crime, I guess. Yeah, if you're still looking for some <laughs> crime, but you don't want it to be regular. <laughs> Not regular crime. <laughs> Irregular crime. Irregular crime. I'll have to go and like find all the different tags for these. <laughs> Um, so technical things that stand out this kind of pioneered the stylized shaky cam it was, they did shaky cam so well like this was 2002 really? yeah so that's about where I actually would have put it yeah Get style. why do you mean stylized? because shaky cam like, they had moments of shaky cam before this yes but I would like say was less. yeah Schindler's List was after this, though, wasn't it? Was Schindler's List after 2002? No, probably not. I think it was the 90s. I don't know. I I think this kind of was what made it feel like it was part of a regular movie sort of a, thing. Yeah. Like it almost adds to the authenticity of the movie. Yes, exactly. Because um, it does. Yeah. <laughs> In this case. Especially. And like adds to sort of the dirty Grittiness, gritty feel exactly. of the city and Which all that do kind a of stuff great job with. yeah wow and like honestly there are also a whole bunch of like editing styles in this mm-hmm. that kind of feel like they would clash but they really don't. They don't like when we get scenes that have like they turn into split screen mm-hmm. and for it, a second and you're yeah. like oh no this is fine yeah it and it feels like it should be out of place but it really is isn't it? out of place. It's <sighs> like I think this movie is one of those ones that's just so intriguing to me because to this day, like I've studied this movie. <laughs> I've watched it over and over again trying to figure out how to make it back when yeah. I was still wanting to make films. Absolutely. Like because I wanted to make something like this. Yes. Um and I still I still can't figure out why all of these <laughs> things do work yes um 
and yeah it's it is an enigma of a film but it is so perfect great one yeah yeah absolutely (laughs) i really don't think that there's much more that we can talk about if you haven't watched it please do yeah like it's just so good (laughs) Um, so next week we're watching the green mile. How can you have a distance that is a color? You'll find out. Okay, next, cool. <laughs> next, next time. Week. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you seen it? I assume not. Uh, nope. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, this, I'm. I'm imagining this has to deal a lot with lawnmowers. So next time we're watching <laughs> the Lawnmower Man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think I know that one's a horror movie. <laughs> Pretty sure I know that one. I've never seen the Lawnmower Man, but it's a uh, not super well loved. Like nice. it's. It's one of those cult movies that like oh, nice. some people really love it. Yeah. But most people go, yeah, that's just terrible. It's just a bad movie. <laughs> nice. Good to know. It's not one of those movies like like Donnie Darko is on this list, right? That's a cult movie. But it's also one that most people can kind of agree, like, it's still a pretty good movie. We just don't have sure. to go watch it in theaters every time that it's I bet. coming through. So <laughs> I have seen Donnie Darko in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> but only once. Nice. There you go. I wouldn't be opposed to going again. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm guessing it is a man that is dark. Uh, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Watch The Shadow. The Shadow is such a good movie. I've never seen The Shadow. It's a good one. Is that... Not on the list, no. No, I was thinking, is that one of like the superhero movies yeah. that is like only half serious? Uh, it's pretty serious, but yeah. Okay. I think you'd like it. That's quite it possible. Bonus, like, I, I like sort of half superhero movies quite a bit. It is half like, superhero movie, for sure. Like, Kick-Ass was one of my favorite uh, okay. movies. That was an okay one. Um, no, wait. I don't think I'm thinking of the right one. Never super mind. is really good, but in like a really sort of messed up way. Mm-hmm. Um, that was... That was one of James Gunn's first movies. Was it's called Super? James Gunn's. James Gunn. Instead of someone else's guns. No. <laughs> it was one of his first. <laughs> one of his first movies, and it's about a guy played by Rain Wilson, uh, Dwight from The Office. Oh, um, cool. Okay. Uh, who decides he wants to be a vigilante, and he goes around hitting people with a wrench. Like criminals with a wrench. <laughs> There's a video game about this. There is. Mm-hmm. Is it Bioshock? No, it's Half Life. Oh, no, he's got a crowbar. In Bioshock, you get a wrench. Oh, sorry, Ratchet and Clank. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. I don't know how we end this, but we probably should. <laughs> I completely agree. Tune in next time. How do we end this? Yeah. <laughs>